Necromancy is just golemancy, except you use bodies instead of rocks, he said. Healing is just necromancy, but before the person dies, she said. Now look where I am. Alexis was deemed the greatest necromancer in the realm, and with good reason, as the creatures he raised from the dead were far more lifelike than those of any known necromancer. They were not pale as corpses, but emaciated warmth as any living being. They did not lumber, but were as agile as a warrior in their springtime. Their only flaw was that they were not able to speak. However, Alexis had one huge secret. He was not actually a necromancer. Instead, he was gifted with a keen mind, as well as two wise masters. His first master was a skilled dwarven craftsman named Thurfuk. He was able to craft statues from all materials with immaculate detail, and was able to make them move like the creatures the statues depicted. When Alexis was apprenticed to Thurfuk, he asked him how he was able to animate the statues so flawlessly. Golemancy is just like necromancy, except you use rocks instead of bodies, Thurfuk answered. Except that rocks don't have joints, so you have to craft those as well before animating. Alexis took the message to heart, but was never quite able to craft joints as skillful as Thurfuk. His second master was a great elfin leader called Sariel. She could craft the most grievous wounds and make her patients look completely unblemished afterwards, as if they have never been harmed. When Alexis was studying the healing arts, he inquired from her how she was able to restore even the most decaying wounds back to life. Healing is just like necromancy, she replied, but before the person dies. She added that restoring dead tissue is easy, but getting it to work as it should was the hard part. Alexis tried to pursue this lesson, but he was never able to properly heal, only giving the outward's appearance of recovery. In the end, he combined both of their lessons. First, he animated skeletons, as they were like the statues of Thurfuk, but with the joints already perfectly made. Then he restored the flesh, as unblemished as if Sariel would have healed them, but not fulfilling any function other than just living. With those creatures, little more than animated skeletal statues clothed in living flesh, he tricked the entire realm and was heralded as a genius necromancer. Everyone except his two masters, who watched in amusement how their student took the wrong parts of their lessons and shaped them into a working whole. This short story was written by Herbron. Next is written by Zaliob. I stopped, panting and sweating from the run. Those damn villagers, and that damn hag... I went to her cabin to learn how to heal. Nothing big. Cuts and bruises, and maybe a few cut-off fingers. And what did she teach me? Freaking golemancy. Because healing is just necromancy, and necromancy is just golemancy. Don't get me wrong, I tried to tell her that I don't need it, but she refused to tell me anything else. So what was I supposed to do? I became her apprentice. I took a deep breath. The villagers are going to be here soon. The hag, I never learned her name, taught me. I didn't have a problem with that, but her shack stank. And not just some faint smell, no. As a kid, we lived next to the butcher, so rotting meat reminded me of home. But even I couldn't stand that odor. So after a few days, I said goodbye and left. I stood up and listened. Nothing. I still have a minute or two until the villagers arrive. I thought back to how I met them. I had nothing to do with the mayor cutting his hand off. I also did nothing to get the honor of healing him. But there I was, trying to put the hand where it belonged. It didn't work. I mean, it did, but not the way I wanted. As it turned out, the hand didn't follow the mayor's will. It followed my commands. In hindsight, this should have been the obvious. I create golems, and these golems follow my orders. Even when I accidentally commanded it to kill the mayor. But how can you accidentally kill someone, you might ask? I don't know. I was angry and shouted things I didn't mean. Next thing I know... I stood there with a dead mare and a few dozen angry villagers. I ran as fast as I could, and now here I am. As I finished my train of thought, I heard barking. Dogs. Fantastic. Escaping just became even harder. I sighed and started to run. Our final story was written by Ozalot. Necromancy has three vital principles. Visualization, 
rectification, and animation. First, you visualize the body of the creature you wish to revive. Then you identify the parts that could use a little magical helping hand, and finally grant it basic thought and movement. Simple enough, I'd say. Couldn't find a single damnable teacher, though. I lost my sister in an accident. We'd gone to watch a duel between some idiot mages from some idiot city because we had never seen any bloody idiot thingamajig like it. I'd always been interested in magic. Never should have asked her to come. Made sense that I'd have to be the one to bring her back, right? It took me years to learn that there was a way. Unfortunately, the only place I could learn it had been destroyed. Apparently, dark magic was bad. Didn't care. I continued searching for a teacher. My first teacher was an animata named Roll. A golemancy expert, if you will. Necromancy is just golemancy, except you use bodies instead of rocks. He said, and I believed him. What could I do? I was desperate and had been wandering for years. So I learned. I studied like my life depended on it. I was happy for a while, helping Roll with his projects, helping the folk with my little blocks of life. But it wasn't life, was it? It wouldn't bring her back. So I left. Roll didn't stop me. Maybe he knew something I didn't. My second teacher was the world's worst healer. Mella was clumsy, irritable, and didn't understand the value of money. She'd take no charge for her healing, and when someone would give her anything, she'd spend it within a week. Infuriating, really. But she was kind, unlike any I'd met, and I met her quite by chance. Had an upset stomach of all things. She cured me and asked me for what reason was I so beat her up, so crusted with failure. I told her. I don't know why I did. I told very few people that which I told her. And she cried. Not for my sister, but for me. The next day, she appeared at my door. Healing is just necromancy, but before the person dies, she said, maybe you can try this for a while. And here I am, five years later, a halomancer, something of my own design. I know all the herbs that could heal and all the ways to make a leg move again. I've moved on, accepted what the world already knew, found peace. It's only in retrospect that I understand this single most important thing that I've been given. From the man who taught me to breathe life, and the woman who taught me to live it. These three stories were written by Herbron, Zeliob, and Ozalot. Read by Bag of Vicodin. Thank you for listening.